and Saitama get a delivery of fan mail from the Hero Association. Genos is praised while Saitama gets a hateful letter, calling him a cheat. Genos, angered by the letter, states he will find the senders. Like I said, friggin' Genos is loyal. Loyal as hell. Alien Conqueror's Arc Genos and Saitama are at Bong's Dojo, where they are demonstrated the Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist and are asked to join, to which Genos refuses. Bong's top disciple, Chiranko, was angered by their statement and challenges Genos, who Genos quickly defeats. Suddenly, a Hero Association staff member arrives, informing Bong and the others that an emergency summons has been issued to S-Class heroes. Genos arrives at Hero Association with Bong and Saitama. They're greeted by Atomic Samurai. He later goes to the roof of the Hero Association headquarter with Child Emperor, Super Alloy Darkshine, Tatsumaki, and King. There, he asks Tatsumaki if he can help, only to be declined. Afterwards, Genos appears besides Child Emperor and Drive Knight, and is told by Drive Knight not to trust Metal Knight. Later, when Metal Knight's robot appears, Genos asks what Metal Knight's intentions are. Genos is relieved when he sees that Saitama is okay after the crash. However, soon Tatsumaki erupts into a fit of anger for being ignored and begins insulting Saitama. Genos retaliates by calling her a brat, which uh, is unfortunate because Tatsumaki didn't take that comment nicely and launches Genos at a large chunk of debris. <laughs> because, you know, you shouldn't mess with Tatsumaki. The King Arc While shopping with Saitama in M City, Genos recognizes King on the streets when suddenly a robot monster by the name of G4 appears to fight King. Genos proposes to watch the fight to see King's abilities. After King fled the scene, Genos begins fighting G4. Because the fight between the two will take a little longer, Genos advises Saitama to go without him. During their fight, Genos melts the robot only to reveal a smaller pilot inside. He proceeds to fight the robot, catching him in a trap, and defeating G4. Gato Introduction Arc Genos then went to Dr. Kuseno with the remaining- Then, okay, I'm gonna put rain on the soil part to make it very grassy. And then I'm gonna switch game because I got this saved. Rather beautiful. You're gonna say how I got the mountains, earthquake, 
Finish. It's a little bit of time it takes for you to get an earth the earthquake thing in the game. Bully. Change. Bully her name. I love you, Atikia. Need explaining. When Rava merged with Wan to defeat Vatu, they started what is known today as the Avatar Cycle. After the harmonic convergence, Wan lived on as the first Avatar, but his legacy lived on after his death as he was reborn in the next Avatar. There have been mentions about Korra being the reincarnation of Aang, and Aang that of Roku, but what is actually reincarnated? We know for a fact that Rava can still manifest as her original self, as seen when Unalak pulls the spirit out of Korra. But is it really each avatar that's reincarnated, or only their memories living through Rava? Since Tenzin meets Aang in the fog of lost souls, what might be transferred from one host to the other might not be a reincarnation of one, but simply Rava and her memories through previous avatars. While Iroh is known as the Dragon of the West, we all know that he didn't slay the last <laughs> living dragon. But Iroh's meeting with the Sun Warriors, and by extension the two dragons, Ren and Shaw, remains shrouded in mystery. Since the Sun Warriors are believed to be extinct, how did Iroh stumble upon them? Did he meet them the same way Aang and Zuko did? And was he alone when he did? Since he was the general of the Fire Nation army back then, wouldn't he have traveled with a few soldiers? There's a lot of mystery still hanging in the air about Iroh and the Sun Warriors' encounter. One way to solve this would be if the newly created Avatar Studios produces an Iroh spin-off series, giving us a bit more about his life during the Hundred Year War and how he became everyone's favorite uncle. Saying that Zuko's family is weird is quite an understatement. While there's tons of strange things happening under the Fire Nation Royal Palace's roof, there's also something peculiar happening when they walk the outside world. While the royal family has made a great deal of effort to be feared, and even more so since Fire Lord Azulon ascended to the throne and almost wiped out an entire nation, it seems that they go unnoticed when outside the palace's walls. When Zuko and Azula traveled to Amber Island for a vacation, none of the other kids seem to recognize the prince and the princess. Whether or not Ozai only allows his face to be known throughout the Fire Nation, it still feels a bit weird that the two most famous teenagers in the whole nation would not be recognized. There might be a secret rule we don't know about, or they just might be too scared to end up engulfed in blue flames, so they played cool. One burning question that pretty much everyone has when it comes to Toph's storyline and Korra is who are her children's fathers? Because it seems that there were two men in her life. One of them might just be Satoru, the son of the Fire Nation man Loban, who founded the Earth and Fire Refinery with Toph's father, Lao Beifong. Toph met Satoru during the comic book The Rift when Aang tried to revive the Yang Chen's festival in Cranefish Town. There's a crystal clear attraction between the Earthbender and the Fire Nation boy, but since they had to battle the vengeful ancient spirit general old iron things between them were left unexplored so far boys there are many old grinder but guys today we are gonna be talking excuse me wait why do you have these on you i got you <laughs> all right now walk in hands why earth let's see ah! talk about for at least a decade or two. The beauty of theory is that we don't always have to find answers, but we can imagine potential events or even what-if scenarios. So hey, grab a drink and some snacks and let's start discussing important questions like, is cabbage bending possible? Would Korra kick Aang's butt in a fight? Why is May so grumpy?